I'm bringing this study to the table because I just think it's interesting and the findings are counterintuitive mm-hmm. to what I would have predicted. Okay. We can discuss in light of what we've just spoken about with regards to CGMs and blood glucose control, um, how to interpret these findings and what they actually mean and even if they're important. That's a different question. So postprandial glycemic response to whole fruit versus blended fruit in healthy young adults. Nicola will be furious. I'm bringing a paper that's looking at glycemic response in healthy young adults. But are they wearing CGMs? Probably. So <laughs> they are wearing CGMs. And they. long story short, they wanted to look at whether the uh, blood glucose response to whole fruit is different to the same fruit, same quantity, but blended. Okay. And there is some really interesting previous studies that have looked at Actually, first, what would you predict? So my prediction would be... So in in, in scenario A, yeah. let's use the, the fruits that they had. Yeah. They had apple and blackberries. Okay. Okay, let's take the same... So you've got that on a bowl, and you could sit down and you could eat that. Yep. The second option is the exact same quantity of apple and blackberries, but we blend them, and now you drink it as a smoothie. Okay. With water. With water, so there's no so there's no other macronutrients, calories coming nothing. in. It's literally just the fruit blended with water versus the whole fruit. Mm-hmm. Okay, so my brain's gone in a couple directions. Straight away, that took me back to uni, where I remember seeing a paper. This was years and years ago when I was actually studying at, at um, Sydney Uni, looking at the difference in glycemic response to very similar to this, but it's actually kind of gross now that I think about it. Vegetables. Um, <laughs> and a glass of water compared mm-hmm. to a soup of those exact same yeah. f- ingredients. So a similar study, right? Ones you're talking mm-hmm. about a fruit smoothie, this one was like vegetables. My memory of that study was also that it was a counterintuitive mm-hmm. outcome where the soup reduced gastric emptying. So the rate at which the food would leave your, your stomach. Therefore, the glucose spike from the soup meal with all the water and the, the voluminous you know, uh, space that gets taken up in your stomach, slowed down the glucose entering the blood, mm. and the the spike was not as it didn't happen as quickly. Mm. It I was think like that's a slower Barbara Roll's gradual. work, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe it was a long time ago. I can't we'll remember. find that study. I think it is her work. <clears throat> so, my thought is for this potentially because that, that study was used to um, recommend people have more soup if they're trying to lose weight from memory. Okay. Interesting. We'd have to dig up. We'll we'll, dig we we up. can come back to that paper. So, yeah, I mean, I'm thinking that the smoothie version might reduce the rate of gastric emptying mm-hmm. because there's more water, more volume, mm-hmm. although it is counterintuitive because you would think when you eat apples and blackberries, it's slower. It takes longer. So in this, it, they got... had 200 mils of water. It is, I should have said this. Okay. <laughs> when they ate the apple and the blackberry yeah. as whole foods, they also had to drink 200 mils of water. Just sip it throughout? Yep. And then in the smoothie, it was 200 mils of water in in a combination of water and ice. Okay. So same volume, but one was like sort of integrated and blended. Yeah. And (sighs) drum roll. So you're right. So the glycemic uh, response was better in the smoothie. That is counterintuitive, though. A lot um, of people of study, would be thinking... Because right. you think, okay, it's liquid. It's going to be absorbed rapidly. Right. We'll see a higher peak, which right. they didn't see. They saw a lower peak, and the area under the curve was lower. Now, I just want to really emphasize, both groups had normal responses. Yeah, yeah. So the whole fruits... <laughs> this study could be misinterpreted where you could say, wow, I'm going to blend all of my fruit. Right. I don't want people to walk away with that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we, but I do think that if someone has prediabetes or type 2 and is really having trouble controlling their blood glucose yeah that could be a strategy interesting now the interesting thing is there are other studies that have compared say mango as a whole fruit with mango as a, a smoothie or a fruit like banana right these are High GI. without seeds so okay. when you take a fruit that's just flesh and there's no seed there's no difference seems to be no difference between eating the whole fruit and the blended when you take something with seeds like passion fruits being done and in this case it was blackberries which have a lot of seeds and those seeds are rich in soluble fiber and they're also very rich in polyphenols more polyphenols inside the seeds than there are in the blackberry flesh the hypothesis of this group is that you 
liberate fiber from the seeds that otherwise wouldn't be liberated would just pass through. Wait, when you smooth, when you blend it? When you blend it. But you'd think your teeth would grind the seeds down. You'd chew them into the same consistency. Or in, in fact, yeah. my brain was telling me that the smoothing or blending mm. would not break down the seeds because it would just miss the blades and end up being whole. Like that's... So <laughs> I don't think their investigation went to the depths of looking at the seeds. So what, was the, what was the structure of those Shame afterwards? Shame on them, mate. Shame um, on them. But this is one hypothesis, right? Yeah. And they could be wrong. Yeah. So it was that the polyphenols and the fiber that's within the seeds are sort of liberated. Yeah. They slow down gastric emptying, particularly the fiber, by making it sort of more viscous yeah. in the small intestine. And then the polyphenols really interest, interesting they actually will inhibit some of the glucose transporters in the small intestine really? so that's the kind of working hypothesis and, and um, I guess the take home message is that seeded fruit when it's in a smoothie seems to improve blood glucose that's response who is that potentially important for I think someone you know who has type 2 diabetes or pre-diabetes that's having challenges with blood glucose control with mm. their fruit consumption mm. um outside of that i'm not sure that's a really i'd love to see a graph of the rate of glucose entering the blood you got a graph there you got a whole paper there there we go thank you sir science hill to the rescue <laughs> i think um, i think that might well that's the area so under the, the curve. yeah so i want to see the whole fruit because my without before i even look at this mm. i haven't seen this study before my intuition would have said chewing the fruit takes longer mm -hmm. The rate of glucose, so the time to consume and ingest it would take longer. Whilst a smoothie, you just drink it down. So you can consume it quickly, right? But the, the gastric emptying takes longer, right? Mm. When you drink the smoothie. But say, intuitively, I would have thought gastric emptying would was faster, faster the, with the smoothie. Right. And I, I'm sure most people would think that. The only reason I kind of knew the answer was because of that soup study that I remember from years ago at uni. Because mm. I remember at the time going, I got it wrong. Mm. My intuition was that the people eating the vegetables and the drinking the, the mm. water would have a different response. I wish there was a third arm, straight up apple juice. Oh, but yeah. that was I think we by know the far, answer to that. Yeah, that, that would, would have resulted in the highest peak for and sure. highest area under the curve because it would have been the least amount of fiber, polyphenols, so or just, at least less compared to the, the smoothie with the seeded fruit. So this does look like the whole fruit did have a, a, a sharper a rise in glucose even. Mm -hmm. So the rate of glucose entering... Mm -hmm. There's something in the wow. mechanical <laughs> disruption of the the seeds. So seems to be okay. I love it. It's a good, great study. Anyway, maybe smoothies aren't so bad after all. I'd never thought they were bad. I'd have them every single day, and uh, I've got diabetes, mm -hmm. and I wear a CGM, mm -hmm. and I'm defying pretty, the I'm odds. Pre I'm pretty happy with defying the, the odds curves. In fact, I had a smoothie just before I came here, and um, I'll show you right now. Show us the, the spike. Proof. Are you ready for the spike? I want to see it. So I had banana, blueberry, half a cup of oats. Mm -hmm. Do you, oh, I, I A lot of carbs. Put, I tend to put a lot of banana in my smoothies. I, I have a f one full frozen and blueberries. banana. Do you, do you eat more blueberries or raspberries, blackberries? What's your favorite? A mix. I, I buy a mix. Yeah. But this is my spike. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of carbs, right? Wow. I mean, some people... It's very stable. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. A lot of people who don't have diabetes, who wear a CGM, would see a spike, spike, mm -hmm. quote unquote, like that, and eliminate that food. Because the flatter, the better, right? Mm -hmm. According to a lot of people. So you can see how like, as long as within two hours, you come back down to that completely normal range, mm -hmm. you're fine. But a lot of people see that elevation and go, oh no, it went above four and a half millimoles or, or whatever the, the milligrams per deciliter or whatever it is, and they'll eliminate mm -hmm. foods out of their diet. So you got to know what data you're looking at and how to interpret it. Right? Yeah, well, let's let's link to Nicola's post. Yeah. And then we'll get her on. Yeah. And I think all of that will become Amazing. abundantly clear for people. Mm -hmm.